This question, there are two things to cover in the question. One, uh, which actually has something to do with waves, is the relationship between waves propagation speed, wavelength, and the wave frequency. Um, that's a, a kind of a basic algebraic expression that you will see in the textbook. And you will see in a lot of context, it's a, one of the formulas that's good to memorize. And this one particular formula is also, if you use dimensional analysis, it's relatively easy to memorize. As in, you know, wave speed in meters per second is equal to frequency one over second times wavelength meters units work out. This is kind of the only combination in which these units can work out. And that um, happens to be the correct uh, formula that relates the wave speed, frequency, and wavelength. Now, what I, um, so th this will be one of the things you need to use. Uh, what I wanted to cover is when this, uh, this relationship is, um, it's a kind of a relationship that you will see in many different, or it's an art, archetype of a relationship you will see in physics context. It's an equation formula that relates three quantities together, three dynamical quantities together. And when you have an equation like that, then there's, a, um, there's a one important thing that you need to be aware of. When you have an equation like that, that relates three dynamical quantities together, and you have a piece of information that says how one of those three dynamical quantities changes. In this particular case, you are told change in the speed. And when you have just that, you have an incomplete set of information. Um, so knowing, having a equation that relates to three dynamical quantities together, like this one, and knowing that how one of those three dynamical quantities change, it doesn't immediately tell you um, how the other two changes. Because with these other two, with the frequency and the wavelength, they could both be changing. Only one of them could be changing, or I guess those are the only options if none of them change then. <laughs> so, when you have a situation, question like that, there's usually some outside knowledge you have to bring in. And that's what I want you to demonstrate with this question, what that outside knowledge is. So, so let me get started. Um, so that relationship we'll use. And it says the speed of light in air is this, and speed of light in glass is this. We'll need to use that at some point. It tells you a red laser with a wavelength of lambda shines uh, instant on the glass and it gets transmitted, et cetera, et cetera. And then it asks, what is the frequency of the light? And um, it doesn't tell you, um, it doesn't ask you what is, um, let's see. At first sight, it might look like it's uh, underspecifying the question. It doesn't tell you, uh, are you asking about frequency of the light in air? Or are you asking about frequency of light in glass? Let me pretend that they, let me pretend that they asked for frequency of the light in air and answer it based on that assumption first. So if I'm doing that, then it's relatively easy question. I have this relationship here. Let me solve that for frequency. Then frequency is the wave speed, three times 10 to the eight meters per second in air divided by the wavelength. 850 nanometers. I'm realizing that that's infrared. That's not late, red. <laughs> 858 times 10 to minus 9 nanometers. And when you work out those numbers, this is what you get. Uh, let me plug in the numbers here. 3 uh, to the power of 
oops, that's not right. Um, three times 10 to the power of eight divided by 858 times 10 to the power of minus nine. Oops. Ah, sorry, one second. <laughs> I need to learn how to use this calculator better divided by 858. And the way to do the times 10 to the minus sign is exponent, type in nine first, and then change the sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. It's giving me that, which I don't want to have to deal with. How do I change this to scientific notation? I mean, well, one thing I do know is uh, I only need a coefficient in front of times 10 to the 14. So let me divide by 10 to the 14. So divide by one times 10 to the power of 14. Okay. Okay, 3.49, whatever. So 3.5. So that's uh, what I get the frequency of the light in air is. 3.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Let me plug that in, make sure I got the right answer on part A, and then we'll answer part B. Um, now, this is the additional information you have to bring in to answer part B. So after you got the frequency, so for part B, it's asking for wavelength of the light in the glass. And when you have this um, relationship here, and you are told that the wave speed changes, that doesn't, you have to be able to bring in one additional information in order for you to have enough information on how the wavelength will be changing. And in this context, this is what I will tell you. The frequency of light, it's a determined at the source. And when the light refracts through different media, when, in fact, I think this holds true for most traveling waves. Uh, most traveling waves, their frequency is determined at the source. And as it travels through different media, like earthquake wave traveling from mantle to crust, or sound wave traveling from air to some solid material, the frequency will stay the same and it will be the wavelength that changes. So you have to bring in that additional piece of information that in this situation, frequency remains constant. That's why this uh, under specification was not problematic because in air or in glass, it's the same. Um, you just have to know that this wavelength is given for in air. So you have to do this calculation in air to get the correct frequency. And once you have correct frequency, then it's gonna be the frequency everywhere in all circumstances for this particular light. Now, I want to emphasize this because Within the context of chapters 16 and 17, you will see other situations where um, if the wave speed changes, it won't be the frequency that stays the same. It could be the wavelength that stays the same. A lot of musical instruments that are based on standing waves kind of work that way. And so what's uh, important for you to recognize early on now so that you don't confuse yourself your later is that this information here that frequency is a constant. It's an additional fact that you have to bring in. You have to be familiar with this particular situation to recognize that in this situation, frequency remains constant. So as wave speed changes, wavelength is going to change um, in tandem. So, um, so let me just use this frequency here and using that calculate the wavelength in glass. That's going to be uh, solving that for lambda wave speed, this time 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the frequency, the same one I had before, um, 3.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or 1 over second. Um, so 2 
times 10 to the 8 divided by 3.5 times 10 to the 14. It's equal to, uh, let me multiply that by 10 to the 9 so that uh, I have something in the units of nanometers. So times 1 times 10 to the power of 9. So 571.4 nanometers. Uh, if that was in there, I think that's an orange color. So 571.4. Incorrect. It's a rounding issue again, I think. <laughs> Let me do this. Uh, um, let me do this in a front alpha so that um, <laughs> this rounding issue. That's why we are getting this rounding issues fixed. Um, so that's the frequency. Let me save that here. Yeah, I think it's a five seventy two point zero. Yeah, you can check. So. <laughs> So 572.0. Right. Um, no, I say this is a rounding issue because to get this right, you had to keep four significant figures and that's one more than the normal number of significant figures people keep. So um, we are fixing this question so that they, only, and they will only enforce 1% uh, tolerance, which uh, means as long as you're keeping three significant figures or more, your answers will be right. So, so yeah, um, that, that's kind of the reason I pulled out this question to demonstrate that. Um, so you are using this expression, which is relatively simple, and uh, but there's an additional knowledge you have to bring in that with the traveling waves, the frequency wave of the wave is determined at the source. And as the wave travels through different medium, the frequency will remain constant. Okay. 